Monday, it's race week. All kinds of stories we're going to talk about here. Uh, I do want to, though, get to something that has been big on the Internet today. And, you know, it's Tennessee still looks for a head women's basketball coach. There's been a lot of discussion, and I have said, uh, Marky e. Bilson, Tri-City Sports Now, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, I have said that the next Tennessee head women's basketball ah, coach has got to be a woman. Got to be a woman. And the reason why is what the program stands for. And I think when we look back, you know, what Gene Enley said on the show last week was that Tennessee fans don't like Holly Warlick, but Lady Vols fans do. And I think that one of the reasons why is that Lady Vols fans who will be, dare I say, a little bit more perceptive of the idea that Tennessee stands for a unique brand of intrepid womanhood. I'll say that, and I don't think I'm overstating that, because, you know, Pat Summit, with Polly Warlick playing for her or coaching by her side, was so ahead of the curve in Title IX and demanding equal recognition for women's sports. A true pioneer. And in this era of, wait a minute, you know, what about this pay gap between men and women. And I have some of the same skepticisms that maybe you do. Yeah, as I've said, I, I'm going to repeat something else I've said. You know, one of the reasons for this is that there are certain jobs where there might not be a female equivalent for that are actually pretty highly paid. Now, you know, if you're going to a restaurant and the cooks, you have a female cook, a male cook, yeah, I mean, the same work. Is there a wage discrepancy there? Well, I can only say that when I have hired people, I did not have, and I haven't, it's very short, but I never discriminated with age. I can tell you that I didn't have a whole lot of hiring experience in on all this, but I hired some people. I was once managed a Hickory Farms kiosk, okay? I mean, you know, I've done some things. Here. And no, I did not say, oh, this is a male employee. They should make this money hours, uh, this money dollars an hour. This person over here uh, is of a different gender, so they should make less. No, I never did that. Never. I don't know that many people that do. If any, I don't know anyone that does, but regardless. The point that I am making, however, is that there are certain jobs like Major League Baseball player where there is not a female equivalent of, and so that sort of creates a wage gap. That's one of the things that is uh, discussed. And so, now, however, that doesn't apply when it's who should the Lady Bulls coach be. I mean, it's the same job. And I really think that Tennessee has pigeonholed itself into, if they think that they're not having success, continued lack of success, because here's the deal. They were underpaying Holly Warlick. Didn't even pay her 700000 a year. That was significantly less than her peers, including male peers, that were coaching at other schools. So this idea of, well, the brand of Tennessee. They were trying to use the brand of Tennessee and ultimately using it as an excuse to underpay their employee. Was it because she was a woman? Well, we can debate that. But what does it seem if you bring in a Jeff Waltz who currently makes twice as what Holly Warlick made, and I'm repeating an old argument, but I just want this, what does it mean if you bring that coach in, because you're going to have to pay him at least, if not more than what he made at Louisville, what does it mean that you would pay him double what you would pay Warlick, or the same amount of money that you paid Pat Summit, if not more, you'd probably have to pay more. Do you see where that is sexist? Absolutely. So what about this? Is it sexism when Notre Dame coach Muppet McGraw drops the mic on the lack of women leaders in sports and says that she would never hire a male to be a basketball coach on her staff? The reason why? Well, as she says, show me the women on 
male basketball coaching staffs. And the NBA is actually, I mean, Nancy Lieberman is uh, coached for the Kings and certainly Becky Hammond with the San Antonio Spurs. I mean, it has happened. Uh, geez, I am not recalling her, her name, but I do know uh, of some women who uh, coached men in two different sports, as a matter of fact. Uh, basketball on the high school level, and I used to cover a hockey coach. She was a former skating uh, instructor, actually, which you can see could be the basis of a uh, hockey coach who I knew took over a, a high school program in another location that I knew of. And that's not that uncommon. You know, and that's a, that's a high school coach. Thing. And like I said, uh, but M McGraw said, look, Show me in college, where are the female assistant coaches of men's teams? So why should I, therefore, hire men? First note, I'm not sure two wrongs make a right. And again, Tennessee is in a very unique situation uh, for what their branding is, for what they stand for, uh, and all this. And really the pigeonhole that they've given them by themselves by not paying Holly Warlick what she was worth, and that probably created the demise of the program. But as Moffitt said, told Think Progress, it was, women need the opportunity. They deserve the opportunity. Despite McGraw's explanation that women need chances to succeed in leadership, this story, by the way, written by Liz Rosher of Yahoo Sports, Yahoo tends to be somewhat on the left. But nevertheless, that doesn't negate the points made in this piece. Uh, some called her decision, Moffat Dyer, only women coaches for the women's basketball program, sexist and discriminatory. But as she has uh, pointed out, how are, uh, did you know the Equal Rights Amendment introduced in 67 and still hasn't passed? Okay, we've heard that, you know, and all this. And the idea of women in combat, we're familiar with the, that sort of thing. I mean, that was once a really big thing. It kind of died out, I guess, about, what, 35 years ago or so. I remember, uh, like I said, I'm an old David Letterman fan. I, there was one early episode of Late Night with David Letterman where I remember you, Hank Williams Jr., uh, followed by a skit from Elaine Boozler, who then ended her segment, uh, you know, just... with a uh, call to, you know, ratify the ERA. There you go. Uh, I'm getting tired of the novelty of the first female governor of this state, the first female African mayor of this city. She's speaking, of course, of, of Chicago, is Moffin. When is it going to become the norm instead of the exception? It is, I think, becoming more and more normal, to tell you the truth. I... I I mean, you know, there, was there that much of a, de a big deal? I, I don't know of any Neanderthal, especially uh, recently, who has said, well, Hillary Clinton, no, no, don't vote for her because she's a, a, a chick. Don't vote for Barack Obama. For, you know, I'm not saying, uh, how can I explain this? The thinking of don't vote for them because they are minorities is passing. And for that matter, that's one of the reasons why Barack Obama was a two-term president. And Hillary Clinton, although she did not win in the Electoral College, got more votes than Donald Trump, and so on and so forth. Okay. I mean, so there are, you know, but this is the, quote, men rule the world. Men have the power. Men make the decision. This, to tell you the truth, I think this is somewhat old-fashioned thinking, because I can show you, we have a female owner of the station who makes the stations here, uh, decisions here, you know, I mean, uh, it's always the men that are the stronger one. I'm not sure, not that the two girls make, uh, two wrongs make a right, but there are some, and in fact, Gina Ariyama has, uh, stated that, uh, you know, he, she, he does not agree with Moffat. However, some very interesting stats that I was not aware of. 
back when Title IX was passed, now there weren't a whole lot of, you know, female sports at that time. When you said Pat Head, later Pat Summit, took the job, wasn't making 10000 a year. She built the job into a $1.5 million annual salary for her. Why then Tennessee, when she, you know, resigned, when she had to uh, quit because of her Alzheimer's, did not pass along a suitable contract to her right-hand woman, I don't know. We could discuss if that is sexist. We could very well discuss that. However, back in those days, when it truly was a part-time job, women's sports, 90% of the coaches were women. Dr. Janice Shelton, later become the AD at ETSU, which is one of the reasons why I'm not big on uh, you know, women make the decisions, because I can show you women making decisions, or men make all the decisions, because I can show you women making decisions, excuse me. Uh, but what I am going to here is saying at that time 90% of the coaches in women's sports were women. Now it's 59%. Hmm. Kind of a, now, could it be that because there is more coin for coaching women's sports, you've got more of an applicant pool, and therefore it is inevitable for men to be coaches? I think you could make that argument, certainly. Anyway, it is kind of an interesting idea there. I'm not sure that uh, the sentiments of Notre Dame coach Muffet McGraw are necessarily uh, the same parameters that uh, Tennessee must go to when they are hiring their coach. As I said, I do believe that the Tennessee coach needs to be a woman simply because you cannot get away with paying a man more than you paid Holly Warlock and not come off as sexist. Same position, this is the establishment, this is the country, this is the culture that which we live in now. And that is the way it is. And I think also that if you hire uh, a Waltz or whoever to be that coach, then you are taking away a significant brand of what Tennessee once stood for. Also, there is some talk that uh, the Oregon coach, being in the Final Four, is on the short list of Tennessee candidates. That's why they haven't hired a candidate. I'm not so sure I'll talk about that later on. But first, we're going to get to Dustin Kearns at Appalachian State. <laughs> 